Hey guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chain Mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, a big hi, hello, welcome, how are you? Uh, thanks for popping in and spending some time with me. I'm so pleased to see you. Today I'm going to be doing a project demonstration for you. Uh, so this one will be great for anybody that loves adding beads to their chainmail. So today I will be showing you how to create a very simple beaded helm bracelet and maybe a pair of earrings as well. All right, guys, let's jump straight into it. Okay, guys, well, I've got a couple of sample pieces made up here for you. Uh, coming up here on the side will be the ring sizes that I use to make up these pieces, as well as they'll be listed down in the description section, which you can find down below this video. But to run through them for you, uh, this smaller piece over here, this uses our 18 gauge AWG rings. That's one millimeter diameter wire. Uh, the two ring sizes, uh, the larger ones are 7mm ID and the smaller ones are 3.5mm. And the beads I've chosen to use are the Toho seed beads in size 6. I prefer Toho, their um, sizing is a little bit more consistent than you find with other brands. Uh, so they're, they're basically my go-to bead as far as seed beads are concerned. The larger version over here is our 16 gauge version, so that's 1.2mm diameter wire. The rings here, the larger ones are 9mm and the smaller ones are 4.25mm ID. The seed beads this time are the Toho seed beads size 3. And also I made up these little pair of matching earrings. So this is made in the 18 gauge rings. Um, and you can see I've just done a short section and then added a little bead at the bottom. So there's a bonus project for you. You just need to make up one short, short little section and then add that beaded bit down at the bottom. Okay, so to start this weave out, you want to pre-close two of your larger rings. So I'm doing this in the 18 gauge version. Now the 7mm ID rings are a little bit larger than I like to use for this size wire but you need the extra size to uh, compensate for the beads. So they can be a little bit springy at this aspect ratio, they can be a little bit harder to close than smaller rings um, but just persevere with it, you can get a nice closure. So take your two pre-closed rings and pop a twist tie on them. If you don't have a twist tie, grab a piece of wire that you may have lying around you know, garden ties, things like that. Um, or you could use um, a paper clip if you need to. All right, so once you've got your two pre-closed large rings on your twist tie, take up two of your small rings and feed those through the two rings that uh, you just closed. Okay, so just your work should look like that at the moment. Then we're going to take up another one of our large rings and this is going to be our orbiting ring with the beads that are on it. So to place our orbiting ring, we put it between our two large rings that we pre-closed previously. This ring doesn't go into these rings at all. Um, if you're new to Helm, um, I'll pop a link up here to a video showing you how to do Helm. You might want to check that out first before you uh, muck around with the beads. But just to show you, this one goes between those two rings. At no stage does it ever go through them. It just goes between them so that when it comes out the other side, you can see that it orbits the two uh, small rings. So these rings never actually pass through anything. So once we've got that in there like that, we're going to grab a couple of our seed beads and pop them on. Oop, bit fiddly. Yeah, well, there, oh, 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 there we go, finally got there early morning guys. Alright, once you've got them on there, close your ring 
That's it. I'm not a fan of this larger ring, but it is what's needed. So once you close your ring up, position your beads so that you've got one each side of the small rings there. Once you've done that, you'll need to take up another large ring. And this time we're going to feed it through the small rings that we added before. Okay, just like that. Making sure that we keep those seed beads in place as best we can. Okay, and then we close that ring up. Okay, trying to keep it all in place. So moving very carefully, flip your work over to the other side and place another large ring through the same path. So trying to keep it all still in place, pass that ring, the large ring through the two small rings and close it up. Bring those two rings up together like that. So you can see I was very careful there not to move those beads. It's not a huge deal if you do, you just need to wiggle them back into place before you place your next ring. So these rings will lock it all into place for you. So make sure you've got your beads in the right spot before you place these next two small rings. So there's one. And two. Okay. So your work should look like this at this stage. So we've locked that orbiting ring in place. You can see it's completely sandwiched there now. And uh, that should keep it all in place for you. So once you've put those two small beads in, you'll need to take up another large bead. Sorry, another large ring. Feed it between your two large rings like we did before, okay? Remembering not going through anything, just lying in between. And then before we close this ring up, we're going to pop on a couple of seed beads. This is me at my most awkward here. Okay, here we go couple of seed beads on. Now you can pop one on each side, you don't have to put them on the same side as I've done here, whatever's comfortable for you guys. Go in and close that ring up, separate those beads then so that there's one on each side of your work. Keeping them all nicely in place with your free hand. Open up another large ring, feed it through those two rings that you added previously there, the two small rings. Close your large ring up, keeping it all in place, flip it over to the other side. And then place another large ring through those same two small rings. Trying to keep the little beads in place. As you can see, they can be a little unruly. They've got a mind of their own. It's not difficult, it's just fiddly, guys. So keep it there in place. Carefully bring the other one up so that our beads are captured there. And then I'm going to take two of my small rings and lock it all down. Okay, and we do that by feeding your small rings through your large rings. Close it up. Pop another one on. Okay. And you can see there it's now all nicely locked into place. And we just keep doing that for the length of the bracelet. So I'll just pop another one on just to show you. So open up another large ring. This is our orbiting ring. So we put it between 
our last pair of large rings that are in our weave. So it goes lies between them like a sandwich. Bring it out all the way to the other side so it pops out and orbits the small rings. Then we're going to grab our little seed beads. We're going to feed them onto that open large ring. Once we've done that, close it up. Separate those beads so that you've got one sitting on each side of the pair of small rings. Holding them in place, grab another large ring and feed it through the small rings, making sure the beads, if you can, stay down in their place there. Close that ring up, turn it over and repeat on the other side with a second large ring. Doing your best to keep those beads where they're supposed to be. Okay, straight through there. Close it up, bring up those two rings so that they're together and lock them in place with two small rings. So you keep doing that guys till you reach the length that you require. And then once you want to place uh, your clasp, okay, oops, sorry about that. You'll want to finish up with those two uh, large rings going through our small rings. And then where you would normally pop on two small rings, you only put one and you attach your clasp. Now you can use the same small ring all the way along or you can use a slightly smaller clasp attachment. This ring is the same size as the ones in the middle, but normally I would use a slightly smaller ring to attach my clasp. And then down the other end, remove that twist tie that you had in place and replace it with another small ring. And that's it guys, that's your beaded helm bracelet. So as I said, really simple, but um, I like it. I think it's quite effective. And then don't forget, of course, you can whip yourself up a set of matching earrings where you just do one section there. You can see that. And then we've popped on it. an extra ring down here with a bead on it and the ear wires up the top. And then you can always make yourself a pendant or something out of the larger rings. It's quite easy to whip up a nice little set. Alright guys, well that's it. That is the video tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed this little bracelet and matching earrings and that you're whipping up some very quickly. If you did uh, like the tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. Share the video if you like. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, consider doing that. That would be awesome for us. Check out some of the other videos while you're here. We've got plenty of projects and weave tutorials here aimed at every level. Um, and while you're here, don't forget to give our shop link up here in the corner a little love and affection because that's where we sell all the bits and bobs and thingamajigs. You're going to need to whip up this project and many others. All right, guys, thanks once again for popping in and spending some time with me. I hope you're keeping safe and well and that I will get to see you again sometime in the very near future. Bye.